Carlos Ramirez, owner of NVS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey. So today I want to talk about sound digital amplifiers, how and why we use them, which part numbers we like, which part numbers we don't like. Um, so the main reason I made the video is there are shops out there having problems with sound digital amplifiers and really high failure rates. These are not problems that we are experiencing here at our shop. It might be the way we do our installs. It might be the certain part numbers that we choose to use and not use. Um, one of the guys out there that's having a lot of trouble with sound digital amplifiers is Lou Bailey. I reached out to Lou a couple of times to see if we could talk, um, to see if I can hear his side of the story, to understand what's going on. Um, Lou hasn't returned my calls. I don't know what happened with Lou Bailey and sound digital, but this guy hates sound digital. I mean, he goes out of his way to bash the amplifier, bash the companies. He has people believing that the amps come out of the box and immediately catch fire. Uh, Lou Bailey, very smart guy, great businessman, owns Lucky 7. Um, his shop does really well, builds really, really high caliber competition bikes. I have no idea what his problem with Sound Digital is, what happened between him and Sound Digital. That has nothing to do with me and my company. Um, Lou is a fanatic for Euphoria Expert, which we are also a dealer for. Euphoria Expert makes great stuff. The reason we don't use a lot of it is we build a lot of rider bikes. So bikes with no tour packs, we put the amplifiers all in the fairing. Um, and I'm sorry, you can't fit two large amplifiers like this in the fairing without cutting. So most of our bikes either get one Sound Digital Evo X800 or two. So two Evo X800s are smaller than the Euphoria Expert 800.4. So is the Euphoria better amp? Yes. Look at the size of it. It's an excellent amplifier. Great signal to noise ratio, amazing amount of power, but it's large. So we don't really use that much because most of the bikes we build get two 800s. It fits in the fairing, no cutting, no grinding. Um, we have a below 5% failure rate with Sound Digital. Um, our failure rate with other amplifiers that we use is around 2%. So it is a little bit higher than the other amplifiers that we use. But think about where we're putting them. We're not putting them in cars. We're putting them in one of the most violent environments that there is, and that's a motorcycle. So I believe a 4 to 5% failure rate is acceptable. Lou has actually accused me of lying, saying that that's not true. You could ask any of my clients, anybody who's done business with me, you can comment on the video. A, the reliability of the amplifiers I've installed on your bike. B, if there's ever been warranty issue, because I give all my clients over-the-counter exchange. So if your amplifier does happen to go out, you don't have to wait for months to get it repaired. We'll just give you another one, and then we'll wait to get the amplifier repaired. Um, but that's enough of that. I'm going to show you how we use them, why we use them. There's certain part numbers from Sound Digital I personally don't like and I personally don't use, and I'm going to show you why. So when I became a dealer for Sound Digital, they were originally the gray amplifiers, and then they had the 800.4 that I couldn't stand. It was that plastic one with the fan that made a lot of noise. But uh, then they went to the Evo line, which is this one. We sold a ton of these, one of the most reliable amplifiers that they ever made. This thing was a workhorse, never broke, awesome. So there was a couple of things. So our go-to setup was a 1200.1 to run subs in a car or mid-bass drivers in a saddlebag and an 800.4 to run the four interior speakers or the four speakers on the bike, fairings and lowers, fairings and torque pack. This was our go-to setup. So the pricing made sense because retail, you could pick this amplifier up for 400, it's the four channel, and the 1200.1, you could pick it up for 500. So it made sense. When Sound Digital went to the Evo X2 line is where we started having problems because the pricing didn't make sense for us. So the 800.4 stayed right around $400, $450, got smaller, same power, so it was good. But the 1200 went up in price to $749. So we didn't really use the 1200 just because mathematically it didn't make sense for us because you're going to spend $750 for an amplifier that does 197 watts times 4 into 4 ohms. So for just about the same price, 
I can run two 800.4s. So it's $900 for two 800.4s where I could bridge them and get 400 watts to each of four speakers. Or our stage three, which uses two 800.4s, is 135 watts to each of the fairing speakers, 135 watts to the lid. Then we take the second one and bridge it and get 800 watts, I'm sorry, 400 watts to each of our eights in the bags. So 900, so we're talking $900 for potentially 1600 watts or $750 for just right around 800, 800 watts if we're running four speakers. Because four speakers on two 800 bridge, they theoretically get 400 watts a piece. Four speakers on a 1200 four, because we're talking four speaker and four speaker, you're at only 200 watts a piece. So half the power for, I'd spend, I convinced my clients to spend $150 more, and then we give them the flexible two amplifier solution. So a lot of people are having problems with 1200.4. We really don't use it, so I really couldn't speak to that. And then I did notice that people weren't paying attention. There's a fan on the bottom of the amplifier. So poor design. Um, doesn't make sense. I had a lot of bikes coming in with issues where the amplifier would be installed in the tour pack and the carpeting in the tour pack was blocking the fan. So when you install these, you're supposed to raise them up a little bit so the amp can breathe. So it's got a fan that's not doing anything. If you sit the amplifier all the way down, it just, it was a poor design. It's, it's Sound Digital's fault. They should never put the fan there. They should have put the fan here like they do on newer ones, but we weren't having issues with these amplifiers because we really weren't using them. Another thing people don't realize about Sound Digital is Sound Digital used to have a power line and their regular Evo line. So in the power line, if you use an 8,000, on base, you would get about 8,000 watts because these are full range amplifiers. If you put these amps on a test bench, if you test them at 1,000 hertz, they do well over rated power. As you start lowering the frequency to like 20, 30, 40 hertz, it drastically reduces the output. And that's any full range amplifier. It's just not designed for that. So in the power series, the amplifiers couldn't play above 500 hertz. They had a much power, stronger power supply. That's why they call them power series. They're designed for base. But when they were running low on 8,000.1s, they would tell you to buy the 12,000.1 in the Evo X line or the Evo line because it put out the same amount of power. The 12,000, when you run it at low frequencies like 40 hertz, puts down about, puts down about 8,000 watts. So it's physically the same amplifier. The 8,000 has a stronger power supply, so it does more than 8,000 watts when you run it a, a closer to 500 or 1,000 hertz. Simple math if you understand the line. So then to simplify things, when they came out with the Evo X line, they did away with power. So it was everything under the Evo X line. And then anything with a 0.1 or a 0.2 in the part number, so a 1200.2, for example, has a stronger power supply than a 1200.4. It's designed to run bass. It can do both. We love that amplifier. We don't like the 1200.4, but we love the 1200.2. We do really well with that amp. So when they came out the Evo X line, they did away with the uh, power and everything was under the Evo X umbrella. So the 1200.1 got replaced with a 1200.2. The Then the Evo X line, they did away with the 1600.1 forum, which is one of my favorite amplifiers, because you can run that amplifier for woofers, you could run it for mids, and then what I liked, what made that amplifier so versatile, is you could actually get more power than if you were running a 3000.1. The problem with the 3000.1, like the Nano 3000.1, was only available in one ohm or two ohm. So let's say you're running a set of eight ohm Bayma 10s, off a 3000.1 2 ohm, technically you're only getting 750 watts per woofer, even though it's a 3000 watt amp. If you use a 1600.1 4 ohm, then the amplifier would actually give you 800 watts per woofer because it's gonna give you maximum power into a 4 ohm load. Two 10 inch 8 ohm drivers in parallel is a perfect 4 ohm load. So even though the amplifier is physically smaller, it can give you more power than the 3000.1 because the 3001.1 is not available in 4 ohm. So there was a client that I had to help uh, with a troubleshoot that he had a problem with a 
it turns out that he was using the 2400.4 bridge to run a set of tens. Um, amplifier is not designed for that. You could do it, you can get away with it, but it's not. So you're taking the amplifier and it's a four channel amplifier and you're bridging it. So it's already making the amplifier work harder and run hotter. And then on top of that, you're making it play bass. It's a full range four channel amplifier. It's made for mids and highs. So then the 2400 is not the right amplifier for that application for a couple of reasons. A, it has the fan on the bottom. So it doesn't breathe like it should. B, the amplifier draws 240 amps of current at full tilt. It's only got four gauge inputs. So through four gauge copper wire, you can run 150, maybe 100 amps, 80 amps of current. Not enough current to push this amplifier to the full 2400 watts. Then on top of that, the amp is 79% efficient. So this amplifier is $1,000, made for mids and highs, bridged it, used it to run bass. The correct amplifier to use would actually be an Evo X2 3000.1. Amplifier does not have a fan on the bottom. It's got the fan on the side. It's a 0.1, so it's got a stronger su power supply. It's supposed to make, it's made to run bass. It can run highs too, but it's a 0.1. It's designed to run bass. On top of that, the amplifier is more efficient. It's 86% efficient versus the 79% that the 2400 is. And they're physically the same size. They're the same chassis. Amps are physically the same size. So the 3000.1, and it costs less. $800 for the 3000.1 versus $1,000 for the 2400.4. The 3000.1 has clipping indicators, and it has indicators to show you if the amplifier's got um, low voltage, if it's overcurrent, if it's going into protection, and then they make the base knob for it. Sound Digital makes a base knob, a level control for this amp that you can mount in the fairing. And when the amp's buried in the fairing or in the tour pack, you can actually see the clip indicators blinking on the base knob. So that's another huge reason to use this amplifier to run eights or tens in your bags. Plus, it draws 242 amps of current at full tilt. That's only two amps more than the 2400. So We'll call it the same. We'll call it 240 amps of current draw for both amplifiers. But you get 600 more watts. You're paying $200 less. You get 600 more watts. And you get the clipping indicators. It's a no-brainer. This is the correct amplifier to use. Had the client used this amplifier, he would not have had that issue. So you're running these amplifiers hard. You're, um, a lot of these guys are not running oxygen-free copper wire. The amps are sensitive. I will give you that. These amps do not like low voltages. They do not like using when you use the wrong cable. They do not like vibration. So that's one of the reasons why they came out with the Power Sports line of amplifiers. The Power Sports line of amplifiers, and if you want to push a 2400 hard and you don't want to use a 3000.1, at least use the 2000 PS. The 2000 PS, it's got a stronger chassis. The amplifier won't flex like the Evo X chassis. You got to remember, these amplifiers were designed for a car, but we insist on using them on a motorcycle. Nobody likes using the Power Sports amplifier because they're a little bit wider and a little bit taller, but they're called Power Sports for a reason. They've been designed more rugged. They could take more abuse. They have better components inside. And people don't realize that the 2000.4 Evo PS puts out the same amount of power as the 2400.4 Evo X. So if you insist on running a four channel hard, at least make sure it's one in the power sports line. So we don't like to use the 2400.4 or the 1200.4. We personally like the 400.4, the 800.4, the 1200.2 and the 3000.1. But if there's a situation where we need a strong four channel, we'll use the 1200 PS or the 2000 PS. They are the, the newest technology, they're the newest amplifiers they've released. They, the chassis, the body of the amplifier, the heat sink is way stronger. That's why it's taller. And later on the summer, I heard through the rumor mill that they will get smaller in size. So the chassis should be really close to the size of the 2400 Evo X and the 1200 Evo X. So once that happens, that is the amplifier that we will be using right now. Since we do 90% of our installs, it's amplifiers in the fairing here at the shop. So that little bit of height and width that they add to it is the difference between us fitting two 1200s in Road Glide or uh, only one 2000 PS. But uh, once they slim down the chassis, we will be switching over to all power sports. Um, it's not even a price thing. Like it doesn't matter, it costs more. 
it's just more reliable, stronger power. Um, but right now we will continue to rock with the Evo X's because this is our go-to 2800.4s. It's so flexible, it's so powerful. It has the lowest failure rate out of any sound digital amplifier. These things just don't break. And most of the builds that we do, we don't need more than 800, 1200 watts RMS. So it works out well for us. Uh, it's cost effective, it's reliable. But um, the Power Sports line, I'm 99% sure we have zero failures. We just did a boat with a bunch of these. We've done a few in the tour pack. Um, we do really well with these amplifiers. We're not having the failure rates that everybody else is having with them, but we use them a little bit differently. Uh, so the 1600.1, for example, is one of my favorite amps. I'm hoping that they re-release it. They might release it in the Power Sports line. It's the Evo X 1600.1 4 ohm. The reason the 4 ohm is important to me, we do a lot of 8 ohm mid bass drivers in the bags. So an 8 ohm driver will make a bridge amplifier do half power. So if we're running a 2000.4 bridged and we have two 4 ohm 10s, then they're going to get 1000 watts a piece. If we use 8 ohm 10s, they're only going to see 500 watts a piece. So the 1600.1 will give us 800 watts to each woofer and it's the size of a 1200. So in a 1200 chassis, we can get 800 watts to each of the mid bass drivers if they're 8 ohm drivers like the Bema Power IX really easy to get an 8 ohm, really hard to get a 4 ohm. Fatal Pro, really easy to get an 8 ohm. Um, the stuff from uh, Eminence, the, the Secret Sauce, the LFs, 8 ohms. There's uh, the NVS 10s, 8 ohms. So that's why the 1600.1 Evo X2 4 ohm is a really important part number for us. And we need that amplifier to come out. So that's the way we use Sound Digital here at the shop. We don't, we're not having the issues that a lot of other people are having, but we th do things differently. We make sure our amplifiers are spaced out so the fan can breathe. We make sure we use oxygen-free copper wire on every install. We upgrade the ground. If we're doing an 8-gauge uh, power run, then we'll do a 4-gauge ground upgrade from the battery to the frame. If we're doing two 800s, we'll do a 4-gauge um, power uh, ground upgrade to the frame. If we're doing anything bigger than that, it's a zero gauge ground that we do to the frame. And it just helps the current flow on the bike. There's a lot of people that don't believe in, they think it's overkill. I want it to be overkill. I want these amplifiers to get the most amount of current possible. People don't realize how low voltage destroys amplifier power supplies. Yes, these amplifiers are sensitive. Yes, they're temperamental. But um, you're asking for a lot. You're asking for something that's small, powerful, fits in the fairing, sounds good, doesn't overheat, the least we can do is help the amplifier do its job. So let's run better grounds. Let's run thicker grounds. Let's run thicker power wire. Let's run thicker speaker wire. Let's make sure that the amp has enough room to breathe. Let's make sure we don't block the fans. I mean, what? I give three year warranty. Anything that we install here at the shop, client gets three year warranty. You can ask any of my clients. You can ask in the comments below. If you're my client, you've had work done with us. You can explain and you can you can share your 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 positive or negative experience um, as far as our warranty because my clients don't wait. My clients get a new, new amp handed to them, bring the bike in, we'll swap it out. We never make them wait. And I would go bankrupt offering a three-year warranty if these amplifiers had a high failure rate. It just wouldn't make sense as a business person. So I'm not defending Sound Digital. Like I'm sure people are having issues with them. I have no idea what happened between Lou Bailey and sound digital i'm just explaining our experience with the company we have an excellent partnership with the company hey i carry a lot of different amplifiers we just prefer the sound digital because we can fit more in the fairing and it performs really well we have the entire euphoria expert line in stock that's what the customer wants to do we have it we have the hertz amplifiers in stock we have the audio dynamic we just got all the new max lx amplifiers in stock and uh the new 1200 watt lx amplifier from hertz Fits in the fairing with Street Glide. We literally just confirmed it this morning. No cutting. So there are options out there. I was just explaining my experience with Sound Digital. The company's been great with me. We've never had an issue. We've never had a warranty issue. When the product did have problems in the beginning, they addressed them immediately. They overnighted me replacements. I mean, what more can you ask for? It's a new platform. Of course, there was issues in the beginning. They took care of them. I was taken care of. My clients were taken care of. And we've been good. So... If you have questions, you can call me or email me. I just wanted to explain 
how we use them, why we like them, why we will continue to support them. And uh, hope this helps. So thank you. Have a good night.